In this video, we will cover Android APS according to the CARES paradigm. We will discuss how Android APS calculates and adjusts the automated insulin delivery when it reverts back to manual mode, specific education tips and sensor issues, and how it shares data. After that, we will go over Android APS indications and software updates. Let's get started. 1. Android APS according to the CARES paradigm. 1. Calculate. In Android APS, the preset basal insulin rate is adjusted based on the predicted glycemia of the next 5 to 9 hours. Here's a breakdown of how Android APS works. Android APS combines different blood glucose or BG predictions to calculate the minimal predicted blood glucose. Android APS calculates a carb predicted BG, which is a prediction based on the carbohydrates on board an insulin-predicted BG, which is a prediction based on the insulin on board, an unannounced meal-predicted BG, which is a prediction in case of unannounced carbohydrate consumption, and a zero-temp-predicted BG, which is a worst-case scenario, in case insulin is suddenly no longer administered or carbohydrates are no longer absorbed. Android APS takes into account predictions errors because the eventual BG prediction is adjusted based on the deviation between the current glucose and the predicted glucose, also known as the blood glucose impact. The algorithm also considers the glycemia trend by calculating the delta, or the difference between the current and past glycemia. And it also takes into account the short-term and long-term glucose momentum, which is the amount of change between the current glucose and the glucose of 15 and 40 minutes ago. The insulin requirement or insul rec is calculated by subtracting the target blood glucose from the minimal predicted blood glucose and dividing this difference by the insulin sensitivity or ISF. This insulin requirement will determine whether to increase or decrease the manually preset basal insulin. If hypoglycemia is predicted, basal insulin will be stopped and rescue carbohydrates may be recommended. Android APS offers two options for insulin delivery. Open APS Advanced Meal Assist, or AMA, and Open AP S Super Micro Bolus, or SMB. In AMA, the required insulin is delivered as a temporary basal with a specified duration and insulin rate. In SMB, half of the calculated temporary basal is given as a micro bolus, delivering the same insulin dose faster, followed by a temporary pause in basal insulin delivery. These temporary basals or super microboluses are recalculated every 5 minutes and can be adjusted within predefined safety settings. Android APS offers optional functions such as AutoSense, an unannounced meal, UAM, detection. AutoSense is a feature in Android APS that increases or decreases the insulin delivery based on the user's insulin sensitivity over the past 4, 8, or 24 hours. It calculates a percentage that reflects how the insulin sensitivity in the past hours differs from the currently set sensitivity, and uses that percent to adjust insulin sensitivity and basal insulin rate. The AutoSense function can also be applied to the target value, adjusting it based on the calculated sensitivity ratio. The AutoSense function does not integrate the period when carbohydrates are on board in its calculation. If you use the AutoSense function, it is important to enter all eated carbs. Otherwise, carbs deviations will be identified wrong as a sensitivity change. On the other hand, if you are continuously eating carbs over an extended period, the effectiveness of AutoSense will be reduced during that period. Changing a pod of infusion set or changing a profile will reset the AutoSense ratio back to 100%. Using the unannounced meal function allows the SMB algorithm to recognize unannounced meals. This is helpful if you forget to tell Android APS about your carbs or estimate your carbs wrong, and the amount of entered carbs is wrong, or if a meal with lots of fat and protein has a longer duration than expected. Without any carb entry, UAM can recognize fast glucose increments caused by carbs, adrenaline, etc., and tries to adjust it with super microboluses. This also works the opposite way. If there is a fast glucose decrease, it can stop SMB earlier. The target value for glycemia can be adjusted between 80 and 200 mg per deciliter or 4.4 and 11 millimol per liter. Android APS places a high priority on safety and incorporates various safety settings and limits to prevent potentially dangerous insulin delivery. To ensure users configure the system correctly and understand its functionality, Android APS includes a series of objectives. 
These objectives serve as a step-by-step -step guide, helping users properly set up the system, including insulin pump settings and gain a comprehensive understanding of its operations. It typically takes around two months to complete these objectives, and it is essential to successfully finish them before fully utilizing the automated insulin delivery functionality. 2. Adjust In Android APS, you have the flexibility to adjust various parameters to personalize your treatment. You can set the target glycemia value per time block of 60 minutes between 80 and 200 mg per deciliter, 4.4 and 11 millimol per liter. It is recommended to use a single target value instead of a range for better performance with Android APS. International guidelines suggest starting with a target range of 100 to 120 mg per deciliter, or 6 to 6.5 millimol per liter. Many users opt for a target value of 100 mg per deciliter, or 6 millimol per liter, during the day and a lower target during the night, for example 90 mg per deciliter, or 5 millimol per liter. This can be considered if this doesn't cause significant hypoglycemia. Android ABS allows you to set different basal insulin profiles based on your individual needs. You can also set any temporary target value or percent of insulin delivery within a safe range. Android APS has three default temp targets, eating soon, activity, and hypo. Eating soon is a temporary target of 90 mg per deciliter or 5 mmol per liter for 45 minutes. Activity is a temporary target of 140 mg per deciliter or 7.8 mmol per liter for 90 minutes. And hypo is a temporary target of 160 mg per deciliter or 8.9 mmol per liter for 60 minutes. These default settings can be changed through the preferences. Carbohydrate ratio, insulin sensitivity, and duration of insulin action can be adjusted according to your specific requirement. In Android APS, the duration of insulin action can be set between 5 to 8 hours, which is typically longer than in traditional insulin models due to the consideration of insulin's long tail effect. Most users prefer 6 to 7 hours. If you require a longer duration, check your ISF settings as they might be too aggressive. In general, the actual duration of insulin action does not differ that much between users. Android APS also allows you to select the type of insulin you use. You can choose from options such as Rapid Acting Profiles for NovRapid or Humalog, an Ultra Rapid Profile for FIASP, a separate profile for Lumjev, or a profile with adjustable peak operation for unlisted insulin or mixtures. Depending on the selected insulin type, Android APS will provide a corresponding profile. Within Android APS, there are numerous other adjustable parameters, and we will delve into the primary ones. Algorithm type, unannounced meal function, autosense, and delivery limits. When starting Android APS, you can choose between the Open APS AMA or Open Apps SMB algorithm. Initially, it is recommended to use supermicroboluses, SMB, only after consuming carbohydrates. If this works well for you, you can choose to activate SMB at other times as well. This option is only possible with a sensor that has good noise reduction capabilities like the Dexcom G5 or G6. Dynamic ISF is an experimental algorithm available in Android APS, in addition to Open APS AMA and SMB. With Dynamic ISF, Insulin sensitivity is dynamically calculated based on the total daily insulin dose and current and predicted blood glucose values. This algorithm considers the insulin resistance that occurs at higher blood glucose levels compared to lower ones. By using dynamic ISF, the system determines your insulin sensitivity independently of the user set values. The UAM detection feature helps the algorithm interpret significant glycemic increases as unannounced meals. It's important to note that this feature is only recommended for use only if you have relatively stable blood sugar control and glucose sensor values. If your glucose control is poor, activating UAM may introduce additional variability. The same can happen if your sensor values are unstable, for example during the first day after a sensor change. Autosense is one of the most important unique features of Android APS. It analyzes your response to insulin over the past 4, 8, or 24 hours and adjusts insulin sensitivity and basal insulin rate accordingly. You have the option to allow Autosense to modify your target value as well. Be aware that your diabetes may vary. It's recommended to evaluate the use of the Autosense results before activating it permanently.
the sensitivity for the AutoSense function can be selected, and the ORF1 option is recommended for users of OpenAPS SMB and UAM. The advanced settings for AutoSense and Android APS are best left unchanged. These include the min 5 min carbon pact, which determines the rate at which carbohydrates are assumed to be broken down when your blood glucose is not rising. The standard value for AMA is 5 mg per deciliter per 5 minutes, while for SMB it's 8 mg per deciliter per 5 minutes. The meal maximum absorption time is the duration after which it is assumed that all carbohydrates have been absorbed. By default, it is set to 6 hours. The max and min autosense ratio are set at 1.2 and 0.8, respectively. They determine the maximum and minimum adjustment percentages based on the autosense function. This means that the values can be adjusted by a maximum of 120% and a minimum of 80% using autosense. Finally, there are also safety settings and limits in Android APS that can be adjusted within a safe range based on the user's age and type. These settings include Maximum basal. For adults, it is recommended to set this limit at 3 to 5 times the highest basal setting. Maximum insulin on board. This limit refers to the maximum combined amount of basal and bolus insulin allowed at once. There are also several advanced safety settings that are recommended to be left unchanged. Android APS offers the option to always use the short average difference instead of relying solely on the most recent sensor glycemia. This is particularly useful when using glycemia sensors with more noise, such as data from XTRIP and Libra sensors. The short average difference considers the average sensor glycemia from the last 15 minutes or the last three sensor values. Maximum daily safety multiplier and current basal safety multiplier are additional limits for the maximum basal insulin rate, and it's generally best to leave them unchanged. The maximum daily multiplier is set to 3 by default, allowing a maximum of 3 times the highest manually set basal rate. The current basal mode multiplier is set to 4, allowing a maximum of 4 times the manually set basal rate. In OpenAPS, AMA, there is another specific safety setting, namely bolus snooze diet divider. It determines the duration for delivering additional insulin after a meal bolus. By default, it is set to half the duration of insulin action. In OpenApps SMB, there are also additional security settings related to supermicroboluses. These include for example the maximum minutes basal to limit supermicroboluses, which is defaulted to 30 minutes. Remember that these settings and parameters should be adjusted in consultation with your healthcare provider, taking into account your individual needs and medical guidance. 3. Revert in Android APS, if there is no connection to the sensor or pump for more than 15 minutes, the system will revert to manual mode. When the connection is lost, the pump will initially switch to the last set temporary basal. After a maximum of 120 minutes, it will transition to manual mode. In manual mode, the basal insulin delivery is set to the preset rate without the suspend before low function. You have the option to enable the suspend before low function manually, but this will only be possible if the sensor and pump are connected. Once the connection to the pump or sensor is re-established, the system will automatically resume the auto mode, which is called automated insulin delivery in Android APS. In this AID mode, the system calculates and administers a temporary basal every five minutes. It's worth noting that in Android APS, the term open loop does not refer to the manual mode. Instead, open loop mode indicates that temporary basals only appear as notifications and you need to confirm them manually. This open loop mode is recommended for users who are new to Android APS and want to observe how the algorithm functions before fully relying on it. 4. Educate Proper education is crucial when starting an automated insulin delivery system. For general education points, please refer to the generic module. The general education points covered were Using fewer carbohydrates to correct hypoglycemia Considering infusion set problems if blood glucose levels remain high without an apparent reason. Trusting the automated insulin delivery system and avoiding unnecessary manual interventions. Timing meal boluses 15 minutes before meals. Utilizing exercise mode 1 to 2 hours before activity. Stopping insulin delivery if the pump is disconnected for more than 15 minutes. Responding to alarms and being mindful of automatic updates on mobile phones. Seeking peer support for guidance and sharing experiences. Android APS is a powerful tool for managing diabetes.
but it's important to remember that it is not a fully automated system that you can set and forget. It requires active monitoring and understanding of its actions. Here are some additional education points specific to using Android APS. Android APS controls your insulin delivery, so it's crucial to watch it closely and understand how it works. Be attentive to any potential errors or unexpected behavior and learn how to interpret the system's actions. Once paired, the phone can instruct the pump to perform various actions. Your phone with Android APS is to be regarded as a medical device and be handled accordingly. Only use the phone for Android APS and essential communications. Consider starting out with separate phones for Android APS and daily smartphone use. Avoid installing unnecessary apps or games that could introduce malware and potentially interfere with the system's operation. Install all security updates provided by your phone manufacturer and Google to keep your device protected. This helps safeguard against potential security vulnerabilities. Keep your mobile phone in close proximity to your insulin pump and CGM. It should be within the recommended distance, which is usually within 5 to 10 meters or 15 to 30 feet, to maintain a reliable connection. Keep a record of all passwords used and store a backup copy of your app in the cloud. Regularly exporting your settings to the cloud simplifies the reinstallation process and prevents the need to redo all your objectives. It's advisable to have a spare mobile phone available for emergencies. This ensures that you have a backup device in case of any technical issues with your primary phone. Utilize advanced settings such as OpenAPS SMB only after you have a good understanding of the basics and have achieved stable blood glucose control. Note that features like the unannounced meal function and autotune may not work optimally for everyone. If you experience hyperglycemia after meals, you can make use of the Eating Soon temporary target. This feature helps you proactively address high blood sugar levels in preparation for upcoming meals. Ensure that your healthcare provider has access to your reports generated by Night Scout. This enables them to stay informed about your diabetes management and make informed decisions during your medical consultations. Make sure you are able to use your insulin pump and sensor properly as well. By following these guidelines and maintaining a proactive approach to using Android APS, you can optimize the system's effectiveness and ensure a safe and reliable automated insulin delivery experience. 5. Sensor Android APS can be linked to the Dexcom sensors, certain Freestyle Libra 2 sensors, Aversens, and light sensors via older Medtronic pumps and POC tech sensors. Since Android APS cannot directly connect to native sensor apps like the Dexcom or Libra Link app, an additional open source sensor app, like Biota or Xtrip, is required to bridge the gap and transmit the sensor data to Android APS. It is recommended to use Dexcom sensors instead of Libra sensors because Dexcom sensors use a smoothing or noise filtering algorithm that makes the sensor curve less jumpy. In an automated insulin delivery system, continuous and accurate sensor values are essential for proper insulin dosing. If your sensor glycemia is jumpy or noisy, it can lead to incorrect insulin dosing, resulting in high or low blood glucose levels. In such cases, it is important to disable the auto mode until the issue is resolved. The problem may be related to the configuration of the glucose sensor or issues with the sensor or site. If necessary, replacing the glucose sensor may be required to address the problem. Certain features like Enable SMB Always and Enable SMB After Carbs can only be used with a blood glucose source that has good noise filtering capabilities. When using Biota, bring your own Dexcom app. The blood glucose data is typically smooth and consistent, and you can take advantage of Dexcom back smoothing. There are no restrictions on using super micro boluses in this case. When using Xtrip with Dexcom G5 or G6 as your CGM, it is important to note that smooth enough data is only delivered if you utilize the OB1 collector in native mode in Xtrip. When using Xtrip as the data source for Freestyle Libra values, you will not be able to activate Enable SMB Always and Enable SMB After Carbs due to the sensor values not being smooth enough. To reduce noise in the data, you can try to enable the Smooth Sensor Noise option in Xtrip Display Settings. 6. Share In Android APS, sharing insulin and glucose data with healthcare providers and family members is possible through various means to enable your healthcare provider to monitor your data, it is essential to set up a Night Scout website. Android APS can send the data to the Night Scout website, allowing your healthcare provider to access and review the information in real time. 
caregivers can access the data on the Personal Night Scout website, either with a token or through other authorized means. This allows them to view and track your insulin and glucose information and stay updated on your diabetes management. For remote care apart from Night Scout, caregivers can use the NS Client app, in which they can adjust targets, import carbs, and other settings. Everything but giving a bolus. Users can download reports from Night Scout or use tools like Night Scout Reporter to generate comprehensive reports that can be shared with healthcare providers for in depth analysis and evaluation. With the release of Android APS version 3.2, using Tidepool as an alternative for Night Scout is expected to be available. Family members can also remotely monitor your data using a Dexcom Follow app if you have a Dexcom Share account, or using Xtrip or its variants. These applications allow them to access real-time glucose and insulin information, providing an additional layer of support and awareness. By leveraging these sharing capabilities, Android APS users can facilitate effective communication and collaboration with their healthcare team and loved ones, fostering a supportive and informed diabetes management environment. 2. Indications Android APS is an open-source app that does not have official indications approved by the FDA or European authorities. It can be used with all rapid-acting insulin analogs. The Android APS app is not available for download from app stores. Users are required to build the app themselves at their own risk. Setting up the system requires determination and technical knowledge. If you don't have the technical know-how at the beginning, you will buy the end. All the information you need can be found in the Android APS documentation that is available online and from others who have already done it. You can ask them in Facebook groups or other forums like Discord. Discord is a highly recommended platform for interactive chat among Android APS and Night Scout users, parents, and developers. It covers a wide range of subjects from first-time user queries to more technically advanced discussions about the inner workings of Android APS and the open app's algorithm. The primary language used on Discord is English. Many people have successfully built Android APS and are now using it entirely safely, but it is essential that every user builds the system themselves so that they thoroughly understand how it works, adjusts its individual dosage algorithm with the help from his or her diabetes team, maintains and monitors the system to ensure it is working properly, and understands how their insulin pump and glucose sensor works. To build and utilize Android APS, you will need a compatible mobile phone and computer. The minimum requirements for your devices can be found in the Android APS documentation. For instance, if you intend to pair Android APS with an Omnipod Dash, your mobile phone should have at least Android version 9.0. The documentation also provides a list of specific mobile phones that have been tested and proven compatible with Android APS. Checking the minimum requirements and compatibility ensures that your devices are capable of running the application effectively. Building the app involves following the step-by-step -step guide in the Android APS documentation, starting from building the APK. You will have to install Git and Android Studio on a PC, and then proceed through the various steps to generate the APK file. It is important to store the necessary passwords and key store files securely for future updates. Once the APK file is generated, it can be saved in the cloud and installed on the mobile phone. After installing the Android APS app, you will need to complete 10 objectives over the course of approximately two months. These objectives guide you through important features and settings, ensuring that you configure your system correctly and understand its operations. By completing the objectives, you will gain confidence and trust in the Android APS system, empowering you to effectively manage your diabetes. In conclusion, Android APS requires users to take an active role in understanding and building the system while adhering to safety precautions and medical guidance. 3. Software Updates Regular software updates are crucial for maintaining the optimal performance and accessing the latest features of Android APS. The Android APS team releases new versions periodically, with major updates occurring annually and minor updates in between. These updates often include bug fixes and improvements to enhance the functionality of the system. Notifications on the Android APS app will notify you when a new version is available, and it is mandatory to update within 60 days to continue using Android APS. To update Android APS, follow these steps. Export your current Android APS settings and save them in a secure location. Use Android Studio to refresh the code to the new version. 
build a new APK file with the same signing key as the previous installation. Transfer the new APK file to your phone and update the current installation. Verify the operation and settings of Android APS after the update. If you encounter any issues, stay calm and seek support from the Android APS community and documentation. Remember that troubleshooting is a normal part of software usage, and with patience, you can overcome any challenges that arise. In conclusion, staying informed and proactive with Android APS is key to optimizing your diabetes management. By keeping up with software updates, following care guidelines, and addressing any issues promptly, you can ensure a smooth and effective experience. Prioritize safety, maintain accurate records, and utilize available resources for support. Embrace the possibilities that Android APS offers to enhance your health and well-being.